Hey everyone, here again with a shipbuilding project. Um, now, uh, I gave a little lecture on how I would go about constructing it, and I've done just a partial here of the actual hull. And this would be applied to the rear, and obviously just symmetry to get to the other side. So, what I've done is I've uh, basically sketched out the bottom. Let me uh, bring up the image that I'm working with, this guy. Okay, so um, I've sketched out something similar to what I, what I see here at the bottom. I've got uh, uh, something similar to the side. I can't spend too much time on it. I'm just really busy with a couple of uh, projects, work, deadlines, that type of thing. But I promised I'd get this done and I just wanted to get it done. So now, uh, so I've got the bottom here and as you can see, I've got individual segments. Uh, same thing with here. This is the side, individual segments. Now. I've got some splines created between those individual segments at those endpoints, and uh, the splines are just simply tangent to uh, a line running uh, vertical. Now, if you need to give this an angle, you can go ahead and give this an angle to uh, to to run the, the angle of the spline differently as it comes in. So uh, there's there's a bit of control there that I'm giving this. Um, now, now now that you have that, I, this is just a, a a fill surface which is the bottom just a closed off profile to get the actual bottom surf so once I have that I go ahead and begin to construct my uh, surfaces now the first surface is going to be a through curve mesh I'm sorry multi-section surface I've just been working with NX a lot multi-section surface I want to pick uh, section 1 section 2 guide 1 2 and preview everything is bellissimo so I keep it. Next I'm going to do uh, the same over here at this end. I want uh, section 1, section 2, guide, guide 1, tangent to this, guide 2, and select OK. Now you'll notice that this comes up to a point. Um, I don't like going directly to a point. What I like to do in case like this is I'm going to go ahead and project this point to this curve up here and then I'm going to go ahead and make my spline that I need I want to go from this point tangent to that up to this point geometry on support I'm going to get placed onto that now once I have that I'm going to go ahead and um, make a I'll uh, do my multi-section surface once again and for this, I'm going to use this as my section one, tangency. Section two, guides. Guide one, and then this whole thing up at the top, I don't have to split it because it's just a guide. If it were a section, I'd have to split it. And hit OK. Now that I have that done, you can see I've got a nice transition working its way all the way up to the top. So I'll just go ahead and split this to that curve and OK. Now the big one is, is how do I create this blend in here? Okay, so you can see I have this natural blend. Let me bring up that image once again, bring that up. You can see I have that natural blend here on that corner, but as I start getting away from the center portion of my hull and going further fore and aft, you can see it starts opening up generously. Now for this, I'm just gonna go ahead and do a blend surf. I wanna go from here tangent to that, to here, tangent to that, hit my OK. Now that I have my blend surf in place, I want to really think about how I want to do this. Now if I were to just simply go in and do a, let's say a multi-section surface for instance, all right, I can put that in there and it goes but as you can see, it, it's not really necessarily matching the true profile of the, of that uh, of that boat of that hull that I have in there. All right? As this as this comes up around the front, that blend begins to sort of wash out. All right. So it's not just a simple blend that wraps all the way around at the front. It washes out as it goes up. So in order to do that, what I like to do, let me go ahead and undo that. Is I'm going to go ahead and find a point on this spline, put it there for now. And now that I have that point on that spline, I'm going to do 
the same basic thing with a point on this spline. I'm just going to simply project it though using this original. That works fine. And now I'm just going to draw in my shape. I'm going to go from this point, tangent to there, all the way up over to here, geometry on support, to there. I may not use this point. I may have spoken too soon. We'll see what ends up happening. Now that I have that in there, I'm going to go in and I can put in another spline in here if I want to. I may need to. Let me see what the multi-section surface looks like. So I'm going to come in here. Section 1, Section 2, Guide. Now as you can see, it starts looking a little cattywampus. Not very sexy. So because of that, I will go ahead and add in a spline to uh, cover that shape that I need. Now that spline is going to be um, applied from this point down through that to that point and I need it to be tangent at both locations. So to do that I'm going to draw on a plane here. I'm going to intersect. I show. I'm going to draw on my spline. It's going to go from this point to there and to this point and tangent that way. Now as you can see it wants to open up a bit so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mess around with my tensions. I'll go like that, bring it sharply in, come over to here, bring that sharply out, select OK. Now that I have that in place I'm going to go into my multi-section surface, guide, one, two, in. And as you can see, it starts messing around, it starts getting a little funky in this area. Okay. And the reason why it's getting that, that kind of that funky shape is it wants to sort of twist as it goes up. You can see this area here wants to cave and buckle up and pull up into that area. Now I can play around with this a little bit on this, if I, if I double click on that, I may be able to uh, clean this up a little bit by affecting the, the, the tension that I have in there. Okay, I may be able to come over here and play with this end, maybe give it a curvature and see what ends up happening. But it still it doesn't give me the cleanest result. And part of the reason is, as you can see, is because of the way these lines are lined up. That's part of it. It's not the complete reason, but if I come in here, uh, let me go ahead and hide that. If I come in here and want to clean that up a little bit, I may need to do actually uh, several things with this, not just the one thing. And that's one of them is, let me double click on that. And I'm going to play around with this. I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to move this over to here like that. Uh, let me go ahead and fix this point in space. Actually, make sure I get the point. There we go. Fix it. Now, I'm going to exit out and take a look at my surfaces. As you can see, it starts to get a little bit more twisted. Okay, because now I'm pushing something out over here, and this area over here is starting to look a little funky. It's pushing it way, way back. So I imagine this is probably the problem that you're experiencing when you go to apply this surface or make this surface. So what I need to do is approach this a little bit differently. Now, if I double click on this and I go back into this sketch, you'll notice that I have a line right over here and I have this arc right over here. And I have a, a, a few parameters set. And whereas I may need to start messing around with these parameters to get this closer to what looks good. Right. As you can see, it starts smoothing out. I'm getting it a lot better, a lot smoother. Now, another thing that I can try, let me go ahead and hide this, is a different method in which to fill this surface in. I may be able to get away with a fill surf. That one to there, that one to there, hit OK. And in this case, that fill surface does a much better job. 
but I still needed to make those modifications and adjustments. These are the kinds of things that you got to go through. Now, mind you, I didn't run through this when I made this just now. I just basically set up a basic frame, kind of like how I would approach it. I didn't make any of these surfaces. This is my first go at making these surfaces. So um, I wanted to make those mistakes along with uh, whoever's watching, right? So maybe you see what I'm doing, kind of struggle, struggle my way through it a little bit. Now, uh, you can see with that fill surface, it does a really, really nice job. Let me delete this multi-section surface. Now that I have that fill surface in, last that I need to do is uh, fill this little area in as well. And I basically do exactly what I just did. I come in here, make another spline, go from here. Now doing the rear end of this, the aft end I should say, it will you'll basically end up with a very very similar modeling uh, constraints modeling conditions right they're very very similar from fore and aft let me go show parameters and this one let me bring this down to there this one bring it up a little bit let me go to curvature select my okay make another spline i'm gonna go from here to here Tangent, geometry on support. I'll use fill again because it did a great job last go. Hit my OK. Split this cat down to there. Whoops. Now let me go ahead and hide all my curves hide all my points, hide all my sketches. Now, as you can see, this more closely resembles the actual shape that I need based off of my drawing. And again, I'd have to go in here and play around with these curves a little bit, but I basically have what I need. I basically have the desired shape. Right At this point now, it's going in there, tweaking, playing, twisting, bending. Let me go ahead and go to a, uh, there we go. Let me hide these. Something just like that. Now you'll also notice that uh, when I bring up that drawing once again, as you come up, to this end, this starts to kink up and then wrap around. At this point, I would draw that shape in there, um, extrude it out, make that flat surface, and then kind of blend things back in based off of that flat surface. Now, uh, something else that, that may have worked is I may have uh, put that in there from the very, very beginning, and it may have made this shape, getting this shape in there a little bit easier, and it may have made it more difficult depending on how I framed it in. But that's, I mean, that's really the basics behind how I would go about doing this. Now, um, you know, if you look at some of these uh, splines that I have in here, like this guy, and we'll go to this one. These splines control the shape considerably now as well. So if I double click on that, I can come in here. And as you can see, I'm really changing the shape of that hull because of that spline input. So those highlight lines that I'm working with, that shape that I'm working with is now severely affected by those by those splines, those controls. All right, so that's one method that I'm that uh, you can easily go in there and do. And like I said, you may want to have uh, this surface that comes up slightly at the at the fore end and uh, blend off into those. It may make it a little bit easier. Um, or in this case, just simply draw that surface in. And then once you have that surface from here, you basically trim everything else off and then just blend everything in at this point to that new surface. A lot of times it's easier to overbuild like this and then come back and then uh, trim away what you want to trim away and then blend everything off. I hope that helps, gives you some ideas. Give it a shot. Please let me know what you think. Uh, if you liked it, uh, have any ideas, comments, suggestions, please leave them below. Like the video, subscribe to my channel, and share with your friends. Thanks again.